Only five bucks, Whopper Junior times two. Double the juniors, that's share a queue. One for you, one for your friends to go. JK, you ate them both, they'll never know. BK, have it your way. Barnhill Arena has become one of the more difficult places to play in SEC College Volleyball. Today, the 13th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks with Maggie Cartwright going for their 13th straight win as they welcome in the Missouri Tigers. Let's take a look at our conference standings. Tennessee ahead of Arkansas, but the Razorbacks undefeated. You see Kentucky and Florida and Missouri coming off a rough loss against Kentucky on Friday night in Como. Hey, welcome courtside, Brett Dolan and Caitlin Vogrens. Thanks for joining us. Arkansas is on this amazing streak, 12 straight wins. Caitlin, they play clean volleyball. They've been efficient. They've been effective. Clean has been the name of the game, really a big point of emphasis for this program. And, you know, only dropping one set in SEC play is really something fantastic. Really does feel like it's different players on different nights, and that's why it makes this Razorback team so much fun to watch. You're definitely right. I mean, and it's all thanks to some great passing and some great setting from setter Hannah Hogue. She's running that 5-1 offense and getting a lot of different players involved. And when you can have that nice, even distribution, it just creates so many more openings, puts a lot of pressure on the opposing middle blockers and all, all blockers, really, and uh, makes it a whole lot easier to get those big kills. The matter if it's Taylor Head, Jill Gill, and Maggie Cartwright, they have put up some big numbers. In fact, Arkansas, no surprise, they lead the SEC in aces per set, but they're second in hitting percentage, assist per set, digs per set, and third in kills. Now, this Mizzou team, they have 11 newcomers, so this is quite an effort by the new head coach, Don Sullivan, to try and mix everybody into this chemistry and get this team ready to roll. We're off and rolling. In fact, uh, they beat the gun. <laughs> they were anxious to get started. Tell you more about those transfers for Mizzou as we get a little further into the match. There's Jill Gillen. She'll start the scoring. Of course, none other than 5-7 five set, five outside hitter. Gillen getting it done with a nice hard swing through the Mizzou block. Been a big week, been a big month and year for Jill Gillen. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Left-handed swing by Iliff, and it seems like Arkansas has seen a lot of those big swing and lefties in recent weeks. Feels like it in recent history, you're right. You know, it's just something a little bit different that Arkansas is not used to. They don't have a big uh, lefty swinger on their side, so, you know, in practice, they don't really get those reps. It's just a little bit different of a look, especially when you're blocking. It's Logan Lednicki of Texas A&M a week ago. There's Maggie Cartwright answering for Arkansas. Our right's been so effective on that slide, so that play behind the setter, it's a little bit faster than her normal hit. You can see her going off of her left foot, kind of similar to that basketball layup. She's been so good with that this year. So good at cutting those shots as well. Keep in mind, Mizzou played on Friday night at home against Kentucky. It was a very competitive set. It looked like Arkansas had that point, but it was out. And then they have to turn around, travel yesterday, and get ready to play Arkansas. Doesn't seem like it's easy for anyone, you know, the, especially the beginning of the conference or play. A lot of travel, a lot of back-to-back. -back. Hard to prepare for your next match. And Joe Gillen goes fast to get the kill. Yep. All Gillen did the other day, Caitlin, at LSU. <laughs> we'll talk about the Aces in a moment. She had 15 kills. She hit 419 in a day's work for Jill Gill. Just another day in the office. Arkansas had the benefit of having Thursday and Friday and then Saturday to prepare for this one. Played up by Taylor Head. Cartwright tried to tip it over, has to play it back out of the net. There's a back row swing with some ferocity by Iliff. And this has become an early extended rally. Pettis got some hands. And Mizzou is going to, they needed to play that over, didn't they? Even I could count that's too many. It <laughs> <laughs> didn't work. I think so. Yeah, it seemed like a little bit of a miss hit. Uh, not something you normally see from Dudley. Yeah, maybe just losing track of the count. That was a really long rally. We saw a lot of good touches on the block, uh, but effectively getting it done from the middle blocker. It's a game it's a, uh, as a set. 
the point gets longer and longer, the middle blocker becomes more and more difficult to defend. Played off the tape ahead. That one had some sink and spin. And Taylor Head able to terminate at the net. Nice awareness from Head, but really nice swing from Gillen in the back row. Hoke's gone to her twice now out of that middle back position. She's gotten it done both times. Courtney Jackson serving again for Arkansas, up by three early. What the Razorbacks have done during this 12-game winning streak is pretty amazing. They've lost only seven sets, so they have been just so efficient, and it's amazing how quickly they have been able to get ahead of teams and then finish them off. You're right, and it's so important to be efficient, like you were saying earlier, with that uh, tough travel schedules that we see. You know, you want to get it done as quickly as possible so you can hit the road and get back home and uh, practice for the next team. Arkansas will have quite a schedule coming up. We'll touch on that later on. But they've had nine wins where they have gone 3-0, blanking their opponent. Love to get this first set today, but there's an answer from Mizzou and get a cola. And Arizona transfer. Now, she started at Tulsa way back in 2019. She was the American Conference Freshman of the Year, but then went to Arizona, now finishing up at Mizzou. Really strong player. It's really difficult to read. At, honestly, right there, I thought she was going to go a really sharp angle shot, but she decides to get the seam instead. Arkansas able to find some real estate. All Arkansas did in that uh, Auburn match that we had not that long ago was hit 435, while Auburn hit negative 49. Is yeah. that the worst you've ever seen? I, it's got to be up there. I mean, 25-6 in the third set, and that's not something that you typically see in conference play. I mean, the six points that Auburn scored in that third set was the fewest that Arkansas had ever allowed in the current scoring system. That's how dominant they were against those Tigers from Auburn. And of the 35 points, I think it was 34 points they gave up to Auburn, a third of those were service errors. Yeah, they were really getting after it behind the service line, and uh, obviously you have the ability to do so when you have such an advantage over the opposing team. Off the slide, Pettis, and it rolled up the arms of Eilif, able to play it over with Demare, and Arkansas ends up winning the point. <laughs> Well, Mizzou's not going to wait any longer. They want a timeout. Coach Sullivan will spin one here. Arkansas off to a 9-3 advantage. When is a football more than a football? When it puts four years of higher education at your fingertips, provides medical, nutrition, and mental health support, offers academic tutoring plus medical coverage, even after college, helps develop your brand, and teaches you that the end zone is only the beginning. For college athletes, a football just means more. Well, back on Wednesday night in Baton Rouge against LSU, Jill Gillen made some program history. In fact, it was just a matter of time before she was able to record what would be career race number 161. She had one on a challenge a little bit earlier, but she gets the ace, sets an Arkansas program record. And for more on Jill, here's our sideline reporter, Emerson Burris. Jill Gillen has become the face of this Arkansas program. Like Brett said, she just set the record of most aces in Arkansas history, but was actually overlooked during her recruiting process. Coach Watson said to us on Friday, I wanted to give her a chance. Even between her commitment and signing periods in high school, she continued to get better and better, and that's translated into her collegiate career, even as a fifth-year senior. Yeah, thank you, Emerson. It's amazing to talk about Jill Gill. She was on a hog pod recently, and. I really pushed Jason Watson a little more on her recruiting because Caitlin, she went and visited a D2 school that didn't offer her. And then she came to Arkansas and Jason Watson did with no offers. And this is how recruiting works in today's day and age. If a coach sees you and likes you, but you don't have any offers, they think, well, maybe I, I caught that person on the right day. Maybe they aren't as good as I'm seeing. If you see a player and you're not convinced you like them, 
but they're being offered by three or four other players, you end up spending some quality time with them. Jason Watson committed to her well, no one else would. And, and to me, I think it changed the trajectory of this program. I think so, too. And, you know, as a, we talk about it all the time. She's five foot seven, right? Outside hitter playing D1 volleyball is not something that you typically see. And so much of the time, everyone will tell you, oh, they're, they're telling you you're going to be able to hit in the front row, but they're going to make you a libero. But Jason Watson had to reiterate to Gillen so many times, no, you're going to play outside hitter, the position that you want to play and the position that – uh, I mean, Emerson said it best. She has become the face of Arkansas volleyball, and, and that's because of those big swings on the outside. And you watch this program having so much success. Hard to imagine without Jill Gill. As we play on here in the fourth set, or the first set, I should say. But uh, finish that thought on Gillen in a moment. Mizzou gets the point. Jason Watson could have said, listen, I like you, but let's wait. Let's see how you continue to get better. Or he could have said, I reserve the right to make you a libero. But he said, nope, you're a hitter. She committed to him. And then when she got that commitment, now there's more people calling back. Jill got better, and she stuck to her commitment as Jason did to his. And to me, I wanted to know, why did he commit to her when no one else did? And he said, I saw something in her. There was some determination. There was some grit. There was some intensity. And I said, let's, let's team up and prove <laughs> people wrong together. Yeah, that grit and tenacity seems so obvious now, too. So um, I would have loved to see her playing in high school. But you had to, I mean, think, obviously Coach Watson saw it, but there had to be some of that grit and tenacity in high school, right? I mean, that's the same oh, way that no we doubt. can see it now. Absolutely. I mean, Jill loves to prove people wrong. 10-6 Arkansas here in the first. And Jason even used the phrase, we'll burn the boats, right? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going to be in this one way or another as Pettis – Smokes one off Getacola, and then she's able to play it over. There's Pettit off the slide. And Sue's been able to play up some of those swings by Arkansas. Hooks at a six-point lead early. There's Gillen. Partially deflected by Iliff. We've had some long rallies here in the first. And Gillen is going to get the kill, and there she is. Good display of patience um, on both sides, really. Both sides were slowing down the block or slowing down the swings with some nice block touches. A good block isn't always a stuff block, but just slowing down the game. But a testament to Gillen, you know, in her fifth year, staying patient, waiting for her set for multiple attempts. She gets that kill. That hot pot I mentioned on Jill Gillen, she did say she hated volleyball when she started playing. Her mom made her keep playing. <laughs> and uh, I guess that worked out. And you know, think about a D2 school not offering her at least immediately and then Jason Watson doing so. I'm still stuck on that because I think sometimes coaches, when they find that gem that nobody else is willing to commit to, and then it works out, it really ties the bow on that story. It completes it. All Gillen does is get powerful swings, although that one played over on a free ball. Zoe Evans from the middle gets one down, and Arkansas builds a seven-point lead, their largest here in the first. Talk about opening up different players with some even distribution. Arkansas excelling in so many things, but I think they can get their middles a little bit more involved, so really nice to see that early kill from Evans. We've seen Jada Lawson come on and serve here over the last couple of months. Swing by Demire. Oh, boy, that was sent back by the block from Mizzou. Big swing, but it was out from Demire, the Collieville, Texas native. Demire has really been looking for that high line. Hogue is in the front row. She's a little bit undersized as a blocker. Uh, still does a really nice job. So you can tell she's really going after it, but still going a little bit too wide. Well, nearly an ace there, played by Gittacola. That one got over and down on the swing from Demire, who has had uh, five straight matches of double figure kills, including 18 at Texas A&M. As we see this one again. So Arkansas beats A&M. A&M goes to Florida, <laughs> wins there. Then Mizzou goes to College Station and beats Texas A&M. We're at that time of the year, whether it's football, volleyball, soccer, I don't know if it matters. There still are upsets, but nothing should surprise us at this point. Right, and 
Yeah, you can make a case for anybody being in the top 10 once you get into that um, little swirl, but Arkansas certainly been doing a nice job in making a name for themselves. Hannah Hogue back to serve while Gillen set that program record for career aces. It's Hogo has 28 this season for the Razorbacks. That's quite a competition with Head and Hogue and Gillen. How in the world did she get that one in? I don't even know. I, I think she split the block there. It's a really nice finesse. You know, I talk about her being a, a fifth year senior and really developing all aspects of her game. I think this part of the game has really been shining lately, her finesse game and just overall court awareness. There's an ace. Arkansas seems to have some runs that make things awfully difficult on their opponents. And Mizzou is going to have to spend another time out because the Razorbacks have built a 10-point lead. We have seen teams spend some early timeouts just trying to win that first set and not get behind. But let's take a look at Arkansas's season summary. Caitlin, that ranking continues to climb. And every time it climbs, it sets a new record. It does. I mean, 13, so close to being in that top 10. And I, you know, talking to Coach Watson and just getting a feel for his players, you could I think if they were in the top 10, they would really get some fire under them and really start pushing on. But obviously, you focus on yourself and your own game, and you try not to pay attention to those other things. But 13 is a pretty cool number. Hey, when I brought up how hot his team was, he said, why do you want to talk about that? Just, just keep it quiet Well, the, the secret's out. He goes, we got to have a good thing rolling. And indeed, they do, trying to win their 13th straight. Meanwhile, Missouri, they're 10 and 6, and they have not had 10 wins in this program since 2020. Coach Don Sullivan coming from UNLV, where she had so much success, has taken over this team. And that was a big match on Friday, Caitlin, because if they were going to upset Kentucky and they played really well, they could have been three and two, but they fought extremely hard against the Wildcats. Yeah, three and two feels a lot different than two and three, but like you said, fought really hard. It was a really close fourth set, right? 26 24. Just a couple of really small hitting errors, but they were nice, big swings. Uh, certainly something to be proud of for the, the Mizzou Tigers taking on a really strong Kentucky team. Coach Sullivan said her team was composed. In big picture, she says, Hey, I like challenges. I've got an incredible group on this squad. And when you have four freshmen, four sophomores, seven transfers, five returners. There's a lot of work to be done, but she did face Arkansas back in that NIVC, the NIT, if you will, of college volleyball. And Arkansas had a pretty good team that year, but the Rebels took them down. Hoke serving again. The Zoos burned two timeouts here in the first set, trying to turn this ship around just a bit. Head from the middle, did not get the hands. Seen a lot of middle back uh, offense from Hogue to both outside hitters. Head, you know, likes to go after those high hands and couldn't quite find them. This is Maya Sands. She spent a year with Coach Sullivan at UNLV, played in the NCAA tournament a year ago. Great effort by Sands right there. Maybe some miscommunication. She had to play it over. And Evans quickly plays it down from the middle. Really like that play to Evans. Getting her involved really lifts up everyone. Uh, you know, two kills already for her. It's really good start. We talk about Arkansas going fast. Caitlin, I thought one of the topics of conversation on one of their road matches recently was when you're defending a team that goes fast, you defend with your feet. I mean, we think about the size of blockers, but if the blockers can't get to a spot quickly, that's where Arkansas's tempo results in some points. Certainly, right? You know, they're going fast to the outside. They're going fast to the right side. And then once you mix in, layer in that middle attack as well, there's so many different one-on-one -on -one situations because you're going to need some really quick feet uh, to be able to cover all things. Isla with the service error in Arkansas, inching a little bit closer here in the first. Set back, get a cola, took the big swing, but Arkansas blocked it back and got the point. See, Cartwright was really excited about that one. Really nice job with the hand work. You can see your hands are pressed so far over the net. Like you said, you defend with your feet, and then once you get wherever you are, you just want to press 
low and over the net, no reaching, just pressing, and she did just that. That's a great pancake to save for the Razorbacks. The slide by Finney. She's going to try again, but she hit it right into the net. Oh, I like that decision going back to Finney on the slide. Uh, just couldn't quite clear the net. Let's watch this pancake effort. Look at that, kid. Awesome, and there's you know two players there as That's well. Right. Take your pick. Pancake competition. <laughs> Courtney Jackson got it. Hard back row swing that'll fall for a much needed Mizzou kill. Mizzou is hitting 31 before that kill. Arkansas at 250. Let's just get a call. Yeah, only two service errors for Mizzou, but it feels like they've been at some critical times. I hate to say you don't want to miss your first serve, but when you're coming from behind, you, you need to at least get a couple in to, you know, string together some points. This kind of suffer the momentum to uh, diminish quickly. Well, there have been some powerful swings by Mizzou, and that's Demire. Terms used to describe her from her coach, determined and physical. And she's not afraid to let it loose, let it rip. Now she's been the big-time player uh, for Mizzou in this first set. Already 17 attempts. Next person after that only has six. Gillen played that late. Head put it down. The kill from Taylor Head. And that's that textbook fast offense. A really flat set to the outside, perfectly placed by Hogue. Let's head really hit it anywhere. That was an awesome play. Tamir Ray didn't get the kill. Joe Gillen won't either. That's blocked back. And Mizzou staves off set point for the time being. Nice block from Dudley. A little bit different of a look when Hogue is in the front row. There's only two hitters to worry about. Makes it a little bit easier on the opposing team's blockers. And she's a tall setter at 6-1. Totally. But Gillen going up against some size from Eilif and Eisenberg. Yeah, Eilif and Dudley are both some really good right pin blockers. Sometimes it's a weakness for some teams. You know, you have your setter up there, not always known for being the best blocker, but the Zoo's right side block is really doing a nice job, and that's important. You're playing some two good outside hitters on Arkansas. She'll try to go with the tip that time to defeat the block. Now she'll go back with the power. And there is Dudley, that much taller setter. Freshman. Another long rally. Who's going to get this point? There's that left-handed swing by Isla. Both teams have invested a lot to this point. And Mizzou will win it. Uh, with Isla going high off the hands, what a nice shot. And just, you know, what some good volleyball on both sides of the net. Saw a lot of block touches, a lot of nice digs. Ultimately, I live with a kill. That lefty on the right side doing a nice job. It's been maybe an area of concern for Arkansas. They've seen a few real good ones, and that will hurt. It's hard to believe that Missouri can come back in this first set. Are you a believer, though, that momentum at the end of a first set might carry over to the second? You know, this isn't really fun, but no. No, okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm really about the one point at a time. I like All your the honesty. points are mutually exclusive of one of <laughs> another. Um, I know some people would think differently. That's not the fun answer, though. Well, Mizzou's trying to find something, and maybe they're looking a little better here at the end of this first set as Demire gets the kill. Arkansas at set point. And a service error gives Arkansas the set one win, 25-15. So Arkansas continues to string together some really impressive sets.
trying to win their 13th straight. Jill Gillen leading the Razorbacks to a 25-15 set one win. When I was younger, I played make-believe. Now when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on. Dream on. If that ain't got a price to pay, California on my license plate. Last year, they ain't even. Put me on sun. Put me on sun. Put me on sun. Arkansas takes set one by 10 points over Mizzou. No surprise. Jill Gillen led the way with four of her team's 12 kills. Doing a nice job so far, taking a look at her, uh, some big swings as usual, but also doing a nice job defensively as well. Already four digs and putting some pressure on Mizzou behind the service line as well. We've seen her hitting out of that middle back position, so Hogue looking for her not only in the front row, but in the back row as well. I believe two of those kills came from middle back. Taylor headed three kills, Cartwright two, Zoe Evans had two, and Certainly this shared distribution is kind of been a storyline we've been talking about all year. It has. It's, you know, how can you get those middles involved early? The middles getting going really opens up both pins. And, um, yeah, really nice to see Pettis also with those kills. But also Zoe Evans, the other middle blocker, has two kills as well. So, like we keep saying, it's all about that even distribution and how you can continue to play clean volleyball for a long period of time. Well, it means one night if, if Gillen is stuffed or teams set out to stop her, then you've got to contend with Head or Cartwright. You are totally right. You never want to be totally reliant on only one player. It's, it's nice for the stats, you know, to have the player with the most whatever, but even is always better. <laughs> Tell you what, I felt for our friends calling the LSU volleyball game with Arkansas on Wednesday night. Jill was Jill, Jillian, and Jillian, <laughs> and then Gillian, Gillen. So that's five different combinations. At one point, I'm like, they're just going to have to just stick with Jill. Jill, Gillen. Even with all those five different players, she did such a nice job. I think each one of those five players had a really nice night. <laughs> that's right. That hog though, is worth checking out on Jill if you get a chance. She talked about her two older brothers, how competitive they were. And I've had coaches tell me that they'll ask female athletes, do you have older brothers? Because if you do, you know they've been trying to compete with them or beat them in everything for their entire life. Yeah, I mean, it's not a coincidence that at least, you know, I, I don't have the data behind me, but it feels like the younger sibling always just has a little bit extra grit and some you know, fiery tenacity. I'm uh, with you. You know, playing against good competition is only going to make <laughs> you better. Kind of get beat up on a little bit. Dylan went fast, couldn't get it down to the floor. She might get another chance. She will. Tell you what, Sands has had some nice saves. And that one will end up in the stands. Yeah, Sands is doing a really nice job making it look easy. And, you know, when you're making it look easy, you're probably doing a pretty darn good job. serving. There's cut right off the slide, but it was blocked backwards, and Mizzou has caused some problems right at the net for Arkansas with their size. Yeah, Arkansas going really fast, but like you said, Mizzou doing a nice job reading, even in that one-on-one -on -one situation. Eisenberg wasn't quite over there yet, still gets that stuff blocked. Nice work. Evans tried to go fast, but again, Mizzou able to play it up. Cartwright tries it again. Did she get some hands? She did. Sue had the short-lived one-point lead, but tied to two here in the second. Nice work by Cartwright, finding her third kill with those high hands. Here's Gillen. Had that career record in aces with 161. She's long on that one. Really been kind of a journey, though, serving in her career. And you talked to Jason Watson about that, how much work she put in to becoming a better server. Gillen's had such a variety of serves over her career. I think she's 
covered them all. She's had a high topspin serve. She's had the jump float serve, which she does now. She's had the standing float. And then she's also had kind of a hybrid topspin serve as well, with just a little bit of a lower toss. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit to find your best yeah. serve, but it's good to have them all in your tool belt. Repetitive, repeatable, some of the terms that you try and attain as Mizzou got another kill. What did Jason say early in her career? You had to put a helmet on to contend with her serve. That was a great line. That's what it felt like. Definitely <laughs> the rip it and grip it mentality. Sue wants to get off to a real good start here in set two, and they've done that, building a 5-2 advantage. See, I told you there was some momentum at the end of the oh, first set right. to carry into the second. You're right, you're right. I think that Mizzou is just doing a nice job playing some fast volleyball, but there could be some momentum there. That's why you're here. Both teams <laughs> have the exact same hitting percentage at 167. And uh, curious to see if Jason Watson might spend a time out if this league grows a little bit longer. Arkansas again in their last 13 matches counting today. They have lost just seven sets. Tough serve by Sands. See if the Hogs have an answer. A lot of great digs, though, by Masu today. Okay, so it seems like Dudley is everywhere. Dudley and Sands. Played up by Gillen. There's the block from the Razorbacks. Yeah, so some good digs and good touches on both sides of the net. Evans getting it done. Again, pressing low and over. You talked about it earlier. Blocking is all about footwork, and it might be, you know, you want to be a tall blocker, obviously, but sometimes it makes it a little bit harder to move. But Evans doing a nice job of both of those things. She's tall and she can move. But Jackson might get the ace. Was that in? Well, it was on the swing from Iliff. Iliff, the lefty on the right side, has a little bit of an advantage going with that high line as a left-handed player on how the angles work out on the right side. Does a really nice job. That thing just really tapered the back line. Well, she has a nice serve. She gets a lot of spin, a lot of movement. We just saw it right there with the ace. So you've been doing a much better job this set serving. It's been causing Arkansas a little bit of trouble. That first set, four errors in the set, no errors, and a lot of aggression. They'll be happy to get her off the service line if they can do it here with Pettis, and that will not be saved. Really important swing there, like you said. You know, once a team gets on a big service run, it could be really hard to call back from. This Razorback team, at times things have come so easy, and that's because they're a veteran squad. They're very effective. They played together for a long time, but you, know, you look for different challenges, and for the Hawks, it's being down early. Here in the second. That thing just about. That was close. That was trouble. That was really Not close. Only hit below us, but then it spun over the yeah, table. The ball was going after. Yeah, Finney was going after your glasses there. She was coming after. <laughs> Pretty good move by Gillen, but she still didn't get it down. And Sue lives to continue this rally, and they will tool the block and build a six-point lead. Arkansas has been struggling here in serve-receive. You know, I don't know if it's something that Mizzou talked about uh, between sets one and two, but they're really getting after it behind the service line. Of course, those have been nasty as well from Getacola. There's an answer for the time being from Pettis. Yeah, Pettis been the answer the last few times that they need to side out in some critical situations. What did Jason tell us that some of the analytics have indicated Taylor Head as the third best float serve in the country? Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, not something that you see on the stat line. It's not all about aces. It's about the other team being out of system, right? They're not able to run their middles. They have to go to the outside. And I would believe it. And that's why it's big that Mizzou got her off that service line quickly. Instead of allowing the Hogs to go on the run, it's back to a six-point Tiger advantage. And now you see the hitting percentage in favor of Mizzou. Mizzou's been siding out really, really quickly and stayed behind that service line. 
way up into the rafters. Can get a call to play it. Yes, what a great effort. Feels like there have been some swings from Arkansas that might normally drop that have not. And that one goes send it a bounce to help, but uh, Tigers have been up to the challenge here in the second. All right, there's been some big swings, but the defense at the net, so getting those touches off the block combined with Sands and the rest of her crew back there seems to run down every ball. This is Jada Lawson. It's another effort where Mizzou just used a little hustle to uh, play it over. Demire sent that one right into the net. I like that play from Arkansas. Hoag's in the front row, so she only has two front row hitters. She decides to go to head out of middle back. I don't know if the set was a little bit too fast or if had already had it in her head that she was going to tip, but really nice placement in the middle of the court. Got Mizzou out of system. And Gillen gets the kill. And don't look now. The Hawks at one time down six have cut it to three. Nice swing from Gillen. We saw a little bit earlier. She got stuffed a couple of times. Hogue doing a nice job of getting some more players involved, which opens up things for Gillen to get back on a run. Head can't get there. Lawson sends it into the students. Pettis back in for Jada Lawson, who exits. Hogs will take that. I mentioned there's always things you work on for the Hogs. Jason Watson was talking a lot to us about scene two this week. Can you elaborate? Yeah, scene two. So there's uh, typically four serving seams. Um, which you, you don't want to serve at a player, but rather you want to serve in between the players. So seam one is the seam closest to the sideline out of right back, and it goes one, two, three, four. After that, in between uh, the serve receive players. So seam two would be in between right back and middle back. Always sometimes a tough thing. Um, to side out of because, you know, the pass is coming from behind the setter. It's hard to push the set all the way to the outside pin. So are we seeing them do something different here? They had four bodies in that back row briefly. Yes, uh, that creates multiple seams. Uh, so the seams get smaller, so the target becomes smaller and a little bit more difficult for the server to hit when there's more seams because there's more people. It almost looked like four deep safeties in a football game right there before that serve. So you can talk about the adjustments, but that was unique. That was different. It is different. Yeah, we typically don't see that fourth passer come back. Um, sometimes you see it in, you know, travel volleyball just to give folks a different look. And I like the adjustment. We'll watch for that when Mizzou serves again. But Arkansas able to get the ace. And I think we have a challenge. Of course, like Gedicola was very adamant that that serve was out, so uh, the referees will take another look. Gillen originally on her historic ace had a challenge, didn't she? So it was one of those where you're not sure if you're going to celebrate and then have it taken off the board. Yeah, talking about momentum, sometimes those are momentum killers, these challenges. So serving a, a little bit of a dual purpose. Well, the referee's right there. But to me, that looks out, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks out to me as well. Did not take long to review that. That's one of those as a coach, you're glad to have the review process, but you feel like saying, just get that right so I don't <laughs> have to spend that challenge in that spot. That was not a difficult sequence. You're right, and especially like I just said, when you're talking about yeah, momentum, it slows down the game. Everyone takes a little bit of a break. It's the groove kind of a little bit out of whack. That's really irritating as a coach. Cartwright had to wait for that swing. Out of the net, Hogue was able to send it back to Gildan. 
And the block goes out, and Mizzou will send us to break with a 15-10 lead. So the Hogs one by 10 in the first set. Tigers looking to answer. We'll be back to Barnhill for more after this. It begins with the flicker of an idea. And when that idea happens in a place made for creative, collaborative thinkers, that idea can transform you. Well, Masu has a five-point lead here in set two. And Janet Demire has been fantastic with nine kills. She's really been that go-to player for the Tigers. She has more than twice as many attempts as any other player on the court. And of course, part of that is a function of being an outside hitter. But they're finding her on the left pin, the middle back. You know, you don't get twice as many attempts just out of being an outside hitter. She had 40 kills a year ago in 15 matches. So as a sophomore, she's taken on a much bigger role. Hayden talking to coach. She's locked in. She's physical. And we've seen a lot of that physicality this afternoon. When you hear coach say terms like determined and physical and locked in, it knows that uh, you know they've made that big step from year one to year two. Definitely a really big difference. You know, coming high school game is just so different. I mean, that goes without being said to Division One volleyball. So once you get that first year under your belt, you feel a little bit more comfortable. You can really start to get things going. Sands again came with coach from UNLV. I think Columbia and Vegas are a little bit different. <laughs> I think I think I'd say so. It's not really a hot take. Might not be a bad thought process. Coach Sullivan's done a nice job, and Arkansas is going to spend a time out. They have fallen behind by seven points here in this second set. We're at that portion of the SEC conference season where maybe nothing should surprise us, whether it's upsets or performances. But this one surprises me a little. Florida, back-to-back -back losses at home, Caitlin. They lost to AM and then Auburn after Auburn just played terribly here at Barnhill. Yeah, I mean, Florida lost their starting setter, but still such a strong team on all parts of the game. Uh, still, yeah, like you said, very shocking. Uh, such a strong team falling twice. Talked about Gillen and her career aces program record. Tennessee swept Alabama on the road. So they're also racking up a pretty big winning streak. Right, and uh, just won against LSU this afternoon as well. So continuing their undefeated season in the SEC. Every time we go into the SEC season, I think teams are looking at Kentucky and Florida. Can they knock one of those two further down the standings? Arkansas is very much alive to try and do that. I don't know if we're at a changing of the guard in the SEC, but both Kentucky and Florida come here late in the regular season. You're right. It feels like the guard is close to changing, does, right? Uh, both of those teams have lost. Tennessee hasn't lost. Arkansas hasn't lost in the SEC, uh, which is always good, right? A rising tide lifts all ships. So. For Coach Sullivan, this is her first year, and I gotta believe it's an eye-opening experience. I mean, she had so much success at UNLV. It's just the consistency of talent that you face on a regular basis. And they were picked 12th out of 13 teams in the SEC. I think they will vastly exceed that, which is exciting for that program. Yeah, you could say that probably lights a little bit of a fire for the team as well. Get things going. This is Sand serving with Mizzou up by seven. Cartwright had to hit that further from the tape than I think she wanted. Couldn't kick it over, so that's another Mizzou point. Yeah, the angles just weren't there for kicking it over. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was going to be tough. Uh, but Mizzou still getting after it with that aggressive serve. Like you said, Cartwright was really off in that, not the swing that she wanted. 
even that time, too, she gets ready to gather and jump, and she has to kind of hold back. Takes away some of the angle, maybe the intensity, and it's been all Tigers here in the second. Really has uh, maybe a little bit of setter hit or miscommunication. That set was really fast, and the set only gets faster and faster as the setter gets closer and closer to the hitter as well. So I don't know. Cartwright wasn't quite ready for that set. I think it all starts with some really strong serving for the Tigers. Is that in? There's some confusion. And the point goes to Mizzou, and the Razorbacks immediately turn towards Jason Watson and hoist their displeasure. I think they were hoping for maybe a replay. What did you see? I, I think so as well. Felt like everybody was screaming touch, <laughs> throwing up the touch signal, but uh, Watson decides to save his challenge. Tigers threatening to run away with this second, but Arkansas gets that kill. Evans having a fantastic night so far. Three kills on six attempts. Arkansas is only hitting 156 for the match. Mizzou at 242. Brief respite there for the Hawks. At times it feels like Mizzou has been dominant here in the second, but the Hawks try to chip away, get a few points here or there before it's too late. Hawks been finding an answer with their middles. You know, a really strong outside hitter and, and right side team. Mizzou's been all over it, so finding a different place to get those kills. That was off the Razorback hands, and Mizzou will inch a little bit closer. Gedicola with her fourth kill, doing a nice job fighting those high hands. This young lady, when she was at Arizona, she also played beach volleyball, and there's no shortage of sand in Tucson. <laughs> Definitely not. Very different game, but uh, I would like to think that a lot of it translates to the indoor game as well. I would think so. Especially her position as outside leader. Back row swing from Gillen, kind of rolled it over, and then just slam dunked down by Taylor Head. Shot from head, staying patient. Those ones seem really easy, but it's really easy to get caught up in the net. So she does a nice job waiting and staying out of it. Obviously starting from a, a nice finesse shot from Gillen, forcing that overpass. All right, what was the whistle there for? Uh, we have an out of rotation for the Tigers, which is not something you typically see at this level. Likely the setter is leaving too early um, from her position. So everybody's in a rotation, and then once the setter or once the server makes contact with the ball, you're allowed to leave, go where you need to go. She might have just gone a little bit See, I'm glad too you're early. here. There was even some confusion on Mizzou's part. I'm sure they knew what that call was, but I don't think they agreed. Probably not. I was at the Mizzou football game yesterday, and LSU got called for three disconcerting signals penalties. You may go a whole year and not see one. There were three. That was disconcerting, but for a different reason. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen one of those. Or at least I didn't know what I was seeing if I have. Taylor Head able to save it, but then she has to get up, and Gillen went ahead and took the big swing. Does it feel like the Hogs have gone with a few more tips rather than swings because of Mizzou's size? Feels like it, but you know, I don't know if it's just their size or just a little bit out of system okay. more than normal, but that is getting it done with a nice big swing. Seeing I guess that makes sense. The blocker, yeah. If you can't go faster, you're a little bit out of system, those blockers have time to kind of anticipate. Head serving. Blocked by Pettis. Put down by Demire. Demire now with 11 kills. Nice job splitting that block. Like that choice from Dudley going back to her outside hitter. Pettis has to go back to the pin again. She's staying nice and patient, waiting for her set, gets after it on that second attempt. There's a lot of really good sophomore hitters in this league. We saw Ledecke. Led Nikki, I should say, from AM and now getting a chance as well to see Demire. Jada Lawson back in to serve.
Hawks took the first one by 10 points. Sue trying to finish off a set two win. And that will help there at the set point. Feels like the script has kind of been flipped. Arkansas did a really nice job in the first set, serving really aggressive, getting Mizzou out of system. Now Mizzou's doing that same thing, serving really aggressive and keeping Arkansas out of system. Feels like a set the Hawks would like to flush. They'll have to wait a little bit longer. But for Mizzou, again, even though they lost to Kentucky 3-1, they could have easily flipped a couple of those sets. Yeah, a couple of them, yeah. It wasn't just one set that was really close. It felt like each set was always really close. You know, talking to Coach Sullivan, she said, you know, we played incredible, and I think so as well. Watching on TV, at least, it, felt, it really never felt like it was anybody's game. Oh, it's an angry swing from Maggie Cartwright. And that shows you the ability of being in system when you can go up and let it rip. Yeah, just a, a, such a difference. You know, you can really feel the difference when you get those players. When the set is in the player's hitting window, they have all aspects of the court that they can get after. Tough serve by Hogue. Locked down by Hare, or Cartwright with Evans. Strong block from Cartwright. That a little bit earlier, pressing low and over the net. She does it again. Good eye work, good feet to put her in that position to press low and over the net. Masu spends a timeout. Want to get this one to conclusion here in the second set. Arkansas has cut it to five at 24-19. Masu bust yesterday from Columbia. Arkansas traveled back Wednesday after their efficient win at LSU. We know this road schedule, though, for the Razorbacks after they finish off two more at home, Caitlin, is really going to be where the challenging aspect of their season comes into play. You're right. When you're student athletes, right, you have to worry about what's going on in the classroom and then throw that in with a lot of traveling. As you can see, three games in a sh nine days is uh, never easy. And uh, we don't know if they're going to be coming back home in between, uh, so you're, you're juggling class and volleyball and all things in between. Yeah, first they've got the Tennessee Kentucky trip, but then I think for the South Carolina, Florida and Georgia trip, they're just going to stay on the road because it almost just makes more sense to do that and take your classes remotely or if we're still going to class, I don't know. <laughs> but rather than trying to we're transition still going to class. Okay, I'll go. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm, I'm unsure <laughs> with some schools and some sports, but I'm sure I'm convinced the Razorback volleyball players are going to class. They'll just have to have a little different feel with those five tough matches and really a two-game road trip and a three-game road trip coming up. Yeah, so that's something, you, you know, so other sports have their challenges as well, but it feels like in volleyball there's just a lot of matches, right? You're on the road a lot. You're usually playing at least two a weekend. That makes for a lot of travel. Jason Watson talks about the SEC scheduling gods a lot. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think they're very happy with a lot of teams. And Mizzou, after that timeout, they get the finish, and they're going to take set two, 25-19. So Arkansas won the first. Missouri answered and took the second. Shortens this match. We'll be back for set three from Barnhill, this SEC tilt on SEC Network right after this. Each team has claimed one set so far in this SEC match from Barnhill Arena. It was the Razorbacks who got off to a strong beginning, Caitlin, with a 10-point win in set one. You're right, and Amy, super dominant hitting and serving. They applied a lot of pressure on Mizzou. Mizzou just could not side out quick enough, and then when they would, they would have that ser serving error. But things a lot different in set two. It feels like the exact opposite. Now Mizzou's really getting after it, hitting, hitting extremely efficiently. Hit over 400 as a team in the second set. Paired with serving aggressively, you're going to win a lot of volleyball games. Yeah, really impressive set two by Missouri. We talked about them playing on Friday night. 11 newcomers for Coach Don Sullivan. Chemistry is a big part of what they work on. And for more on that, here's Emerson, Emerson Burris. This Mizzou team is a family. Coach Sullivan's number one rule, love the game. They're relentless and intentional in everything they do. And Coach Sullivan makes it a priority to continue having fun off the court and bonding as a team. 
They do Taco Tuesday, a scavenger hunt at the beginning of the season. They even saw the Barbie movie together, but as soon as they get back to the court, it's a let it rip mentality. Yeah, they even have a book club, but Taco Tuesdays are undefeated. I mean, nothing like it. There's really <laughs> nothing like it. It's really the essence of coaching in today's day and age. You have a new staff, new coaches. You have freshmen, you have transfers. And the whole idea is how quickly can you be competitive? And to do that, you've got to find that chemistry. You've got to find the culture and, and work on it. And it's even more impressive. A couple of those things were organic as well. So it's not just prescriptive for the coaches. Hey, you guys have to hang out every Tuesday and make tacos. Team thought of that together. And of course, when it's organic, it's more genuine and a whole lot more fun. She used speed dating as kind of an example where they get the people together and they have conversations, talking, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just learning more about your teammates as Mizzou takes that point for a 2-1 lead. What Arkansas has been able to do with their culture is they've had all these players together for two, three years, and they've had the benefit of being able to play so much as one unit and mix in a few new players here and there. A veteran like Cartwright, she's been here forever. And Gillen Head, Masseuse had to work at it to try and accelerate this process. Yeah, two very different teams in, in terms of seniority. Gillen serving. There's some power from Taylor Head. Really nice swing from Head, but I really like that choice from Hogue. Head was basically on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Eisenberg didn't quite get all the way to the outside. As we take another look, she goes after that high angle shot for the kill. That's a big swing. Did it get some hands? I thought it was out, and it is, although Mizzou is going to challenge. Mizzou immediately celebrating. They're very confident that uh, that's why he caught some high hands. A second review. Mizzou won the first one. Let's see if we have a look. Mizzou felt pretty confident that was going to go in their favor. Let's see what we can. Detect. Looking for some change in direction or some finger movement. I don't see much finger movement. That's I, the problem. No, me neither. And I say this all the time, but these touch replays, I think, are the hardest thing they have uh, to, to make a definitive call. To in change. and out's one thing. Right. But, uh, the hands and the fingers at the net, because I don't see Taylor's fingers bending backwards, and I don't know if you would. Uh, Consider that enough movement or change of direction with that blur? Right. I, I don't know. I'm always hoping the uh, the third official has a better view than we do. Let's take one more look. We're going to go to a pruder like here. <laughs> Anything know. change your mind? Nothing. Nothing <laughs> changed my mind. It never does with these replays of <laughs> the touches, though. So I'm not a good person to ask. Wow, Mizzou wins it. There was a touch. So instead of a 4-2 racer back league, we're tied at three. Masu's batting a thousand on their challenge. Up, over, and down from Maggie Cartwright. Love that choice from Cartwright. Really nice pass from Gillen. Sands is a has a really nice float serve. I feel like I could even see some of the float, but Gillen handles it well, gives Hogue all three options for Cartwright to put it away. Nice played out of the net by Dudley. Pettis went fast, and then Mizzou couldn't turn around. I looked, didn't see it, and it falls. Running the middle in transition, 
is exactly what you want to do to get some big points. Middle is really difficult to defend, and pairing that with, you know, after a couple of rallies on both sides of the net, get caught up on your heels a little bit, and uh, Pettis comes away with the kill. There's the big left-handed swing by Eiliff. Jason Watson doesn't like the whistle. What was the call? Looks like uh, calling that head was in the net. And I love to look at the actual player when they call in the net or not. You can usually tell if they thought they were in the net, but head's not really She's reacting. Not so I think she was in the net, but Watson thinks otherwise. Yeah, Jason was some, not happy. Yeah, having some conversation with the down official. Blocked back, but out. And head does that so well, finding those high hands. Feels like a majority of her kills are off of those tools, which is not an easy thing to do. This is Maggie Cartwright. Oh, the block worked from Head and Pettis. Nice work from Pettis. Makes things a little bit easier. The setter for Mizzou is in the front row, so there's only two hitters. Pettis just has to worry about two people instead of three. Does narrow the options a bit. See if the Hogs can find a little bit of that first set magic. That will help. They build a four-point lead. Back-to-back -back blocks have some big swings. You can expect Mizzou maybe to take something a little bit off, try to find those deep corners, or maybe even tip over the block. Especially, you know, they have their setter in the front row. Maybe Dudley tries to mix in a dump. There's our second. Our second out of rotation call, which means Dudley is leaving too early. So Mizzou's in rotation four, rotation four. The setter is as far away as she can possibly be. She was trying to creep in. Creep in. You know, you don't want to waste a second to get where you need to go. Uh, so you can make a nice set. She's leave, leaving a little bit too early. Well, things travel in threes. We'll see if Mizzou has one more of those. I know Coach Sullivan hoping that's it. My goodness, that was some power from Gillen from the middle. Wow, oh, what a swing. I mean, that set wasn't even a, like an in-system middle back set, but Gillen's still getting it done. Timeout, Mizzou. Coach Sullivan has used those timeouts to try and end some Razorback runs and quiet their momentum. Hawks up six here in the third. When is a football more than a football? When it puts four years of higher education at your fingertips, provides medical, nutrition, and mental health support, offers academic tutoring plus medical coverage, even after college, helps develop your brand, and teaches you that the end zone is only the beginning. For college athletes, a football just means more. Tell you what, it has been an amazing stretch for the Razorback women's programs on campus. It's been more than three weeks, almost a month, since a Razorback women's team lost in the golf of tournament, uh, the Blessings Invitational. Maria Jose Marin was the individual winner. She's 17 years old. They call her the little robot. Volleyball highest ranking in 25 years. Soccer's ranked number six. Volleyball's trying to win their 13th straight. Soccer would love to host all the way throughout to maybe the College Cup. And as Arkansas gets that service air, there's been a lot of conversation, Caitlin, about how badly these Razorback players want to host an NCAA region. Yeah, it feels like not too long ago we were talking about making it to the NCAA tournament. Now it's definitely a different mentality looking to host. And of course, there's a couple more teams that are able to host this year, so why not Arkansas? Want to be in that top 16. Obviously, Arkansas's RPI, very good. And this is where I, I think taking care of business at home is an important part of maintaining that ranking as we see a replay. And then we'll know a lot more once the team finishes off that very difficult road sequence or series that we touched on. Yeah, that road series has 
A lot of difficult teams in the mix. You can come away with some big wings wins. Obviously, that up your chances a whole lot more. We talked about Taylor Head serving not that long ago. A couple of aces. She can tie Gillen and Hannah Hogue for the most on this team this season. And the aces have been a big part of racking up some points. See if Taylor can make it two in a row. Well, no. Was that a jinx? I think so. I, I think so. that one's on you, Brad. Okay. I'll wear that one. Just finishing the thought, though, on the women's programs. I mean, it's amazing. The soccer team lost on September 7th. It's the last time a women's program has lost. Incredible, yeah, to have all three women's sports top 15. You know, that top 15 is nipping at the heels of, you know, the top 10. Ooh. I got that one. Nice. I got a souvenir. Do I get to keep it? I think so. All right, good. I, I'm going to keep that right here. That's going to be our, our prize right here. No See? one's asking for it back. Yep, there we go. Souvenir. I'm going to take this home. The first one nearly took our head off. That was an easier play. Yeah, so you deserve that one. Good. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. You're going to practice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mazu's trying to creep back into this one. This is Lore and Forbes serving. Springfield, Missouri native. That was played over by Mizzou. Dylan sends that one into the crowd. Souvenirs for everybody right now. <laughs> Why not? Oh, what a nice swing. Again, just staying patient, waiting for her set. You can see there's a nice split in the block. Uh, I mean, you can just really feel her energy and her power. I gave it back. Uh, I mean, you didn't have Returned to. It. You could have snuck away. I wouldn't have told anyone. Quick answer by Mizzou. Morgan Eisenberg. Eisenberg getting it done with the quick set in the middle. As Dudley rotates to the back row, having more options with our hitters and of course that means that I lives back in the front row. Hope tried to dump it over and that did not work. Yeah, She's been really adept at that at times this year. Yeah it seems like Mizzou's really been all over at Demary with that last one going up at the same time. That is Demary's hitter. Is your hitter can be your setter in terms of blocking assignments so nice job recognizing that. What have you seen out of Dudley today from the setting position for Mizzou? Been doing a nice job getting the middles involved when it matters, especially in that second set. You know, Demerit getting a lot of sets maybe. I don't know if that's by design. She's obviously a strong player, but would like to see a little bit more even distribution to her other players getting eye lift involved when she rotates to the front row. Eilish's been having a really nice night. Nine kills, only two errors. Indeed. Of course, she's only up there half the time. Demire with a double-double with her digs and kills. It's a bump set from Dudley and sent backwards. Dudley had 40 assists versus A&M. She had 76 assists in the week. And that was too easy. Cartwright found some open real estate. Tamara, it looked like she's a little bit too wide on Cartwright. Cartwright is a right-handed, right-side hitter. She's just kind of floating over a little bit too wide. She's not going to have a lot of power hitting line on that type of set. I think that replay is a pretty good example of what you were talking about. Back row swing from Gittacolda. Gillen, did she get hands? I don't think so. Mizzou gets the point. I like that swing, though. You could really tell she was going after those high hands, but nice job from Mizzou staying disciplined, pressing low and over the block, not giving her anything to hit. Team's hitting percentage is almost identical. 215 Arkansas, 211 Mizzou. Mistakes like that, of course, then start to factor in what might separate these teams. If they continue to have similar percentages.
Cut right again. It's up in the rafters. Great job by Jackson. Cut right again, and that was down. She seems to have this innate ability to direct where she's hitting almost better than anybody else. It does feel like she's almost like catching and throwing it. It's, it is so precise. Again, doing a nice job hitting that cross-court shot. I'd be curious to see if Mizzou kind of scoots in their block a little bit. They're giving her too much angle. And that was blocked by Cartwright. Cartwright already with her third block by herself, doing a really nice job on that right pin. Missouri spins another timeout. Let's go back and take a look at this block again from Maggie Cartwright. You can tell she's really been working on her hand work, so those hands need to be angled to her left, making sure that ball stays in the court. Of course, you need to touch it. That's step one, but step two is making sure you direct it back in the court so you don't get tooled. I'm curious, Caitlin, in that situation, if you're cart right, are you watching the hitter? Are you watching the flight of the ball to try and time your leap? Oh, that's a great question, Brett. So you want to look, you look at the ball on the pass, then you look at the setter, then you look at the ball, and then you watch the hitter. The hitter tells you everything that you need to know. So once you identify, is that set too far inside, too far outside, is it off the net, is it not? Your eyes immediately go to the hitter because the hitter will tell you, will tell the ball where it's going to go, not the ball. That's a lot going on that right there in that sequence, but that was a pretty good shot to see Cartwright. She was looking at the set, she was watching the hitter opposite her, yes, the and that last allowed thing, her to get up. Of course, the last thing you want to have your eyes on the hitter, and it's such a hard thing to do because, of course, we want to watch the ball. But if you're looking at the hitter, um, you can get a lot more tells, right? You can tell if their elbow's coming down, if their hands go up for a tip. Um, but the hitter tells you everything that you need to know. And there are some mini momentum swings within a match, but a good block seems to really kind of fire up the masses. There's really nothing like it. This isn't a contact sport, right? But it feels like the block is as much contact as you're ever going to get. Set one was all Arkansas. Set two, pretty much all Missouri. Hawks trying to regain the advantage here in the third set. I don't know if Getacola wanted to touch that or not. She made a late decision, and it didn't work. There's another ace. She keeps adding to her record. Yeah, with Gill and serve. I mean, a good float serve is in the low 40s for a mile per hour, but I'd, I need to bring in my speed gun because I, I would like to think that hers is probably in the upper 40s, so sometimes you just can't get out of the way fast enough. Yeah, it's just part of her game, I think, that has just improved so much. And you touched on her journey earlier, the serving journey. There were times where it really felt like, you know, she might have been in her own head from a serving standpoint, and now she's just a weapon wherever she is on the floor. It, it feels like she is a lot more confident behind the, behind the service line. Not that she wasn't confident before, but even talking with Coach Watson, you never really knew what you were going to get early in Gillen's serving career. She always, always went after it. And I think Jill Gillen's a type of player that just wants to beat you, and whatever she has to do, it just allows her that energy to, to translate to her teammates. Yeah, you never want to say that errors are okay, but her errors were a different kind of error. You know, she was giving it everything she had, and, you know, it might be a serve that hits the band in the stands, but you could tell she was really getting after it. Eight to seven, Arkansas. One more service error. And we can uh, update that total with that one. Yeah, that's a nice gift for Arkansas. Isla has a really strong top spin serve. That one is just a little bit too deep. She's tough. Really strong player playing six rotations this year, something a little bit new for her. It's certainly a different part of the game that you have to be get used to on the defensive side. Dunk down by Pettis. Arkansas a little bit closer to taking set three. Pettis, one of those transfers for Arkansas from Mississippi State. So she's been in these SEC matches before, but with a team that's trying to win its 13th straight this afternoon. Taylor Head went fast, didn't get the hands, and Mizzou staves off set point for the time being. 
going really fast. And it looks like that set almost didn't even have a peak. It was flat the entire time. It's hard to get a kill um, without getting some touch on the block on that one. So nice job from Mizzou, not letting Head get those high hands. Traffic jam there for Mizzou as they were able to play that one over. And the tip works again. It felt like early in this match, Arkansas was hitting into a lot of hands and a lot of blocks. And I guess the natural adjustment is to do a few more tips. Definitely. You, you'd like to think that you can cover the whole court, but you just can't with six players. And Pettis does a nice job finding that little small opening. Set point for the Razorbacks. Big swing from Demire. There's the block, and that's the size again that Mizzou brings, even with their setter in the front row with Sierra Dudley. Yeah, Dudley, freshman setter, not easy running the offense, let alone a 5-1 offense when you have to set and block. I always talk about blocking is such a hard skill, that transition from high school to college volleyball, but she's making it look easy. That was a nice job. Demire thought she might hit that antenna. Back row swing from Eilif. Well, this ended here. It did not. More size from Mizzou. Wow, that one pounded off Cartwright. That's that line shot that Demare has been going after. She's been a little bit wide uh, for the past couple of tenths, but that one really did a nice job of finding Cartwright. Cartwright kind of couldn't get out of the way fast enough. Oh, that just spun right down. Mizzou couldn't terminate. And that's how Arkansas takes that three. Wow, what a nice job defensively. We don't talk about it enough. Jackson with some fantastic digs, covering her players, letting Gillen getting those second swings. Well, back and forth we've gone. Arkansas won the first, then Mizzou. The Hawks take set three. Back for the fourth from Barnhill. When is a football more than a football? When it puts four years of higher education at your fingertips, provides medical, nutrition, and mental health support, offers academic tutoring plus medical coverage, even after college, helps develop your brand, and teaches you that the end zone is only the beginning. For college athletes, a football just means more. Well, here's the hitters we've been featuring. Jill Gillen on the left, Janet Demire on the right for Mizzou. They have been a lot of fun to watch. Both six rotation outside hitters getting, all, you know, majority of the sets. Uh, you know, Demire really been that go-to player. 40 attack attempts. The next player in line is Ilif with 20. So, you know, twice as many as the next person who is a right side. She's getting it done, already has 13 kills. And of course, Gillen, that go-to player for Arkansas as well. Again, another six rotation outside hitter. She's getting a whole lot of sets on the left side, but also Ben a force out of middle back getting it done. I really like this play. It gives Hogue some more options, especially when Hogue is in the front row. You know, the one thing about Demire, though, going back to Mizzou's big swinger, that she was injured in the spring. And I think Jason Watson told us they saw this team in the spring. They had eight healthy players. And, you know, you talk about the challenges in year one for Coach Don. Well, you know, not having some of your big hitters in the spring when you're trying to implement a, a new system and concepts, really difficult not easy you know there's a lot of lost time the spring is the time to get back to basics and like you said with coach Sullivan coming in that's your time to establish what your style of volleyball is but she's been doing a nice job playing catch up I say doubly serving to begin our fourth oh, Evans just stuffed that one right down to win the first point Really nice shot from Evans. You know, you're, not, you're never expected to block a tip. The whole thing is, you know, you can tip around the block, 
but Evans not even letting it get past her. Really nice work. That's a good point. You think those tips going up and over. That one was just poked right back. Hannah Hogue. She had three aces against LSU, and she'll win that point. So she had 38 assists in three sets, and then also had three aces. So that's a nice night's work, too, against the Tigers. Blocked by Mizzou and Jordan Iliff, the 6'2 junior. Nice work from Iliff. Recognizing, I'd like to say, that her eyes were on Gillen instead of the ball to be able to get that step block. She's in the one-on-one -on -one situation. <laughs> she was excited. Yeah, I'd say. She spent some time with the USA Volleyball Collegiate team, so that's great experience. You know, you talk about blocking being a momentum swinger. When you are when you have a solo block, that's like momentum swinger times 100. I would agree. That dig ended up being a great set. And down, and Mizzou with a couple of quick points to tie things up. Great swing by Eilip, the lefty. Right side here, and we think Coach Watson is going to challenge that one. He turned to Susie Fritz and said, did you see it? <laughs> and she must have said something to him immediately where he could go for that challenge card. And Coach Fritz, of course, a longtime Kansas State head coach. Jason was once her assistant. Coach Sullivan played at Kansas State. We talked about this uh, small fraternity sorority of Midwestern volleyball, and it all seems to go through Manhattan, Kansas. I think so. It's, it's becoming a metropolis of the Midwest volleyball community, for sure. It helps out it's, you know, in the middle of the country. It does, but Manhattan's in the middle of nowhere, too. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge. America City, for sure. <laughs> the little app. <laughs> I don't believe this took very long either. So we've had a couple of really quick reviews, and Mizzou's won them all. Doing a nice job, that call. It's confirmed, like you said, it didn't take long. We have a really good angle on that ball. And you know what? In real time, I couldn't tell if it was in or out. But looking at this replay, looks it. pretty in to yep. me. That's why it did not take long. Favor returned after that delay from Demire with the long service error. You know, Arkansas hitting 189, Caitlin, and I talked about what they did at LSU where they were so good. And in fact, they hit 480 in the second set against LSU, against Auburn, they hit 435. This has been a little different field tonight, and I think that's where some of the blocking and the size from Mizzou is factored in. The blocking and the size, but. Still think it really, a lot of it goes back to the serving. Mizzou serving really aggressive. It's hard to get in system. Um, and they're just not able to be as efficient when you're passing 10, 15 feet off the net. Good point. That one got some hands. Serve from Sands. Taylor Head went fast and put it down. Courtney Jackson back to serve. That barely cleared the tape. Talk about out of system. Cartwright again finds that perfect angle. She does have a, a sharp angle, but great choice from Ho going to Cartwright. We saw that you, Dudley and Mizzou squad were out of system, so that means Degola was coming back from who knows where. She wasn't set up to block. That makes it pretty easy for Cartwright to get the kill. That was poked back by Eilip, but played over by Mizzou. I thought maybe that one was going to drop. It didn't. And then Pettis just pounded one into the face of Dudley, but it was still played over. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was almost a perfect pass, too. And finally a tool to block. 
It felt like a third time was truly the charm for Arkansas, the two previous attempts so close to getting points, but it didn't work. You have Mizzou finding a way just to get hit. Uh, of course, you see that first play, mm. Dudley. With a Is nice she going to dig out of that? Yeah, uh, you don't get a dig if you don't get the point. Okay. But that should count for something. That one is long. Counts for a concussion, maybe, if that was <laughs> a little closer to the uh, cranium than maybe the neck area. But regardless, she's fine. That's the good news. How about the ace? That was a calm and collected ace from Courtney Jackson in Arkansas. And Mizzou, they've done this a few times today. When Arkansas starts to extend to that five or six point lead, they take the timeout. We'll break a must win set four for Mizzou and the Hogs are up by six. When is a football more than a football? When it puts four years of higher education at your fingertips, provides medical, nutrition, and mental health support, offers academic tutoring plus medical coverage even after college, helps develop your brand, and teaches you that the end zone is only the beginning. For college athletes, a football just means more. Let's take a look at our match summary. Hawks dominated set one. Mizzou really took Arkansas to task in the second set. But Maggie Cartwright having a real nice match. Cartwright with that double-double, 10 kills, 12 digs. Second place with digs, you know, nothing. We don't talk about digs enough um, because, you know, when you get a dig, it's, it's kind of like one of those things where if you're doing a good job, nobody's really talking about it. But we need to talk about it a little bit more because she's been doing a really All nice right. job. We'll make a point of that. Yeah, We'll good. talk more about the dig. And that block was out. Arkansas will take the 10th point. Cartwright with her 11th kill, tied in that number one position on the Arkansas squad with Gillen and number of kills. Looks like she's having fun today. I think so. Big smiles. I think when you're playing good, you're having a little bit of fun. There's no doubt. There's been a lot of smiles from this Arkansas team in the last couple of months. That'll end up on media row. Sue gets an answer. Kyla's really been getting it done on that right side. 11 kills, hitting almost 400. Like you kind of mentioned earlier, Arkansas struggling a bit with those lefty right sides. I know Jason Watson pointed that out to us, and, and we were here for AM and Logan Lednicki and what she did. She was amazing for a couple of sets. And obviously, it's a different look, it's a different feel. It's tough to practice against something like that. That looked long. Did it get hands? It did not. Mizzou thought they did. And curious to see if Coach Sullivan is going to challenge. She's 3-0 on challenges today. Why not, right? They're going to challenge whether there was a touch at the net. And this is really a big point for Mizzou. They can swing this back in the other direction rather than being down seven. You're right. 10-5 feels a whole lot different than 11-4. But talking about those right sides, it's it's not that ju they're just left-handed. They're just really good That's right true. sides. You know, and it's hard to defend a good right side. The ball doesn't go to them as often, so it's not something that you practice as often. But taking a look at this play on the outside, does it catch some hands? We had one of these earlier, and to me it didn't look like there was much hand movement. You don't see the, the fingers bend backwards, but we were wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mizzou won the point, so I'll just wait and see what transpires. If nothing else, that replay shows you the way in the SEC that these teams play above the net. Right. It's, a lot of stuff happens above the net. You get a good look at the handwork, um, where that ball is clearing the net, if the blockers are pressing low and over, which most of the time I think they are. I think our down official and I shared a first-class row today. I was trying to sleep, and I don't know what he was doing, but uh, we've seen that pink whistle a lot. And there was the tip. Tell you what, 
Coach Sullivan hasn't <laughs> missed today. She's four for four in challenges. Incredible, with two of those being touches off the block. I, incredible. So 10-5 is our score. And that helps because, again, this is a do or die fourth set. For the Tigers, Isla, a tremendous server. The Hawks would love to get her off the service line. And that was an e effort by Sands to keep it from finding that back corner. Saved by Gillen. What an effort. And played over by Pettis. See if that hustle leads to a point for the Hogs. Cartwright again went sprawling down. Taylor Head could not get it over the net. Oh, wow. What a fantastic save by multiple players for Arkansas. So great touch by Gillen, but Hogue directing the ball back to the middle of the court while laying out is not an easy thing. Just incredible. Obviously, Arkansas wanted that point. Right now, they need to get I left off the service line. Yeah, I lift with that. It's kind of like that hybrid top spin serve. Definitely has a lot of spin on it, but it's not a super high toss. So one of these serves that we don't see terribly often. As you know, I'm not a volleyball maestro by any stretch, but watching several of their matches this week, I just wrote down spin <laughs> on her serve because it was so tough. And Arkansas finally will end her run with that point, that kill. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, don't want a good player behind the service line to go on a run. So nice work from Cartwright to, to end that run because you can, you can lose that lead pretty fast. It's played by Gattacola. Straight up into the rafters. How did they play that one over? I don't know. That one seemed to defy the laws of physics for sure. <laughs> I think you're right. And that one was put down. One point, at one point, it was 10-3 Arkansas in this fourth set. Missouri's definitely been climbing back. Feels like they're getting two points for every Arkansas is one type of thing. So it's kind of a, a slow slow, sneaky comeback. Sure is. Still plenty of time, though, in this fourth set. My goodness. That's a tough one there. Just a little bit of miscommunication. Of course, it's not the pass that Gillen wanted, but two players were there ready to play it. Just kind of got in the way of one another. So once up seven, it's down to two. Arkansas will take that freebie. What do you consider a big run in volleyball? Four points? Does that have to be five or six? I think four is big enough. It's hard to run off four straight points in this league. It really is, especially when teams are siding out, you know, 60% or so is the goal. You do that four times in a row is when the odds are against you, you know, if you're siding out more than not. That was tooled off Hannah Hogue. This is Lauren Forbes. And that one will not be safe. Masu has done an amazing effort, at least in my mind, on saving some of those first balls that have gone sideways or backwards. That was just too far. Yeah, it's a nice swing, but like you said, Mizzou, the, the dig might be crazy, but it's really high, so it gives their players enough time to at least make a big effort to try to get that second touch. Jada Lawson, the junior from North Little Rock, back in to serve, wearing that brace on that left leg. Cartwright got her left arm on it, kept it alive. See if Gillen gets a chance off the bump set. She does. It's out of bounds. Point Arkansas. Nice high swing from Gillen. Gillen's been a little bit quiet for the last couple of rotations. Does a nice job finding those high hands. 
course, when we talk about runs for Arkansas, what Jason Watson always preaches is playing clean. And, you know, it's, it's not a sexy stat when you talk about playing clean longer. It's, it's part of their goal. And I think when you look at a big area of success this year, and that's probably not the right time for that point, <laughs> it's just it's playing better volleyball for longer stretches to win sets and matches. Of course, it's, you know, any, any team could be good for here and there, but who can play better longer? And a lot of that goes to your schedule and getting things done quickly, like Arkansas has been. So you just have that time to rest and recover because it's all about who can play better longer. It's certainly a marathon, not a sprint. Dylan gets her 13th kill. Cartwright has a dozen. Taylor had with 10. Taylor's had some. Swings into the net as well, so she has a lower hitting percentage than normal today. It seems like the, the connection between Hogan and Head, Hogan setting her really fast. We know that Head likes to hit a fastball, but sometimes it feels like it's just barely clearing the tape, so it's really not giving Head a lot of options. Great effort there by Taylor. Boy, that was rocketed over. But Amiri and Maggie Cartwright, it's been her night. Really has 13 kills and a couple of kills off some tips, really just finding the perfect moment to mix in those tips. Sometimes when the ball has to go that high to get over the hands, it's amazing that it can still land without being touched, but she's found the right location a couple of times. Especially as a right side, if you can work the line, have a lot of power behind the line, it makes that left back player kind of dig into their heels a little bit, opens up the tip. That was Hogue serving. I think that's long, and it is. And Arkansas starts to get just a little bit of separation here in the fourth. Demare going after that high line again. Has a really nice swing, but it has a tendency to go a little bit too deep or a little bit too wide, so Arkansas doing a nice job staying disciplined on their blocking and not reaching. Take a look at the upcoming schedules for these two teams as we really get into the meat of SEC conference play for Missouri. They're going to be at Alabama on Wednesday, and then they'll be at home against Old Miss. they got a couple of ranked teams, though, on that schedule. Yeah, Arkansas, or Arkansas, pardon me, the SEC. Uh, just more and more teams coming ranked. Nothing is ever easy, like you mentioned. Anything can happen at this point of this season. But For Arkansas, though, I would hate to say it gets difficult. It's always difficult, but they've got two more at home. Friday, Old Miss, that'll be an SEC Network Plus. Alabama, a linear broadcast on the network on the 15th. But then you start on that road stretch with Tennessee and Kentucky and South Carolina. A lot of time on the road is never easy. Like you said, it's balancing school and volleyball and everything else in between. And then you throw in some ranked opponents. It makes it especially difficult. Well, for those college volleyball aficionados that uh, watch the network, here's what's on tap for the SEC network. You can uh, tune in and watch. Wednesday, Missouri against Alabama. Arkansas has seen both A&M and LSU recently. Those two teams will play on Friday. That'll be a good one on Sunday, though, won't it? I, I would say so, two top 25 teams. Kentucky been struggling a little bit. Uh, a little bit less Kentucky than they have been, right? Uh, but still a very strong team. I've been really impressed with Coach Sullivan's team. And again, worth repeating, I know I've said this a few times, this is year one. But she has a, a big team, an athletic team. A They've been team. scrappy today. Young team too, sure. Out of a timeout. Yeah, it's cliche, but it's true. It's true. You, you really don't want to miss those ones. This is Demire. Arkansas was playing pinball there for a second, but they get it over. Played up by Hogue. Rolled over by Gillen. She doesn't get many kills like that. No. Uh, but the look on her face was one like, well, I'll take it. Yeah, you'd rather be lucky than good. Uh, but I'm not saying that that was luck, but not something typical. It's, it looked like Sands was right there. I don't know if she just running a little bit too far in, not expecting that ball to come as deep as it did. Gillen had to reach back, extend just a bit for it. So I think Mizzou might have been ready for the heat, and they didn't get it. 
Now it's Arkansas really kind of laying out, sprawling on the floor to play balls up. Although that one doesn't work from Hogue, and Gillen can't track it down. Nice swing from Gennicola going down the line. Hogue was just a little bit too late with her arms. Taking another look. See, she has a lot of line available because she is that set was high and inside. So Cartwright doing a nice job moving the block inside, but that just leaves more line for Hogue to defend. Sand serving, head swinging, played up by Sand. Boy, that almost hit the roof. <laughs> that was way up there. And that was down. I thought maybe it would go out, but it did not. Yeah, I think the rest of the Razorbacks were expecting that ball to go out as well. Head does a really nice job of tooling the block, but really good block from Eyelift to keep the ball in play. Sands, an Illinois native, spent that first year at UNLV with Coach Sullivan. Now playing in the SEC, and here come the Tigers. Yeah, those back-to-back -back blocks. I don't really believe in momentum, but I am feeling it a little bit here. Those blocks really get things going. You know, one thing Jason Watson has not done is kind of spend a timeout when the Zoo's run off a couple of points. You're right. The Zoo has burned a lot of timeouts to spell the Razorback momentum, if it's such a thing. We can debate that ongoing the rest of the year. <laughs> But I'm beginning to feel it as well, because again, Mizzou was down 18 to 12. Now it's 18 16. 18 16. There's the timeout. I talked him into it. Yeah, you did. You did. That was good of him to listen, because I think it was the right choice as well. A couple of stuff blocks, some big kills. Those get you really fired up. Have a chance to finish it off in four sets. Obviously, the Racerbacks would love to do so. But for Mizzou, if they could somehow come from six down at one point here in this fourth to force a fifth, that's exactly what they would love to do. And the Hogs have had a hard time handling some of the heat from the Tigers in yeah. these recent swings. Uh, got a great swing, and it's so funny. Demary can't, can't even believe it. Her hands are on her head. Uh, just uh, such a fantastic performance from her. 12 kills, only two errors. So 12 kills on 27 attempts. Can expect majority of the balls to go to Iliff when she's in the front row. And if she's in the front row, she's a right side hitter. That means that Dudley's in the back row and she has a whole lot of good options. Here's your updated hitting percentage. Arkansas at 197. The kills, a few more for the Hogs. Blocks slightly in favor of Mizzou, but Arkansas's lead is down to two here in the fourth. We've alternated set wins, Arkansas, Mizzou, Arkansas, and the Hawks would like to change that trend and finish it off. Keep in mind, again, Arkansas played Wednesday. They've been off since. Mizzou played Friday at home against Kentucky. Sometimes you think that's an advantage, but it doesn't always work out that way either. Yeah, I think you could kind of spin it both ways, but I know, I don't know if this is in my old age, I would prefer to have played on Wednesday and had a nice long break. <laughs> I would too. Versus playing Friday, but you know, rest versus rust, Brett, I don't know. It's hard to get rusty after a couple of days. That so. sounds like a baseball playoff <laughs> discussion, with rest versus rust. It does feel like the Hawks need to come out of this timeout and win the point in this 4-0 run by Mizzou, Ooh, and Cartwright again has been the player that Arkansas has leaned on when they've needed a kill and needed a point. 14 kills for Cartwright, really doing a nice job. That, that tip didn't even clear the block, but she somehow found a way to tip it into the block and not have it come back on her side. Jackson serving, and Arkansas will gladly take that ace. A nice serve from Jackson into the seam. So that's seam three right there wow. between middle back and left back. Three Tigers right there and none played it. Dudley had to go retrieve. Can the Hawks go on a 3-0 run? Sanaya Pettis says yes. Uh, now Pettis in the double digits with the kill. She's been a little bit quiet and I think that's just because Arkansas has been passing a little bit too far off the net. Love that, getting Pettis involved. That's a good point. We talked about 
the distribution early and how Arkansas has different players either on different nights or in the course of a match that step up. That's four players in double figures and kills. It is. And Evans not getting a lot of sets. The other middle blocker for Arkansas being their fifth kill or fifth hitter. Uh, but she's been doing a nice job with three kills and only one error. It's not been Taylor Hitt's night, some of those swings. It hasn't. There's been just, like we were talking about earlier, just the sets feel really low to head. I think she likes to run it a little bit faster than the rest of the players. It just feels a little bit too fast. Arkansas inches a little bit closer to match point. Maggie Cartwright. 14 kills, a 367 hitting percentage. And a couple of aces to serve. That's what Mizzou's done, Caitlin, a few times tonight. Those yeah. ricochets. It's right place, right time. And there's Taylor Head. Oh, was she over? Yeah, at least. Half of the ball needs to be on your side of the net to get after it. I'm taking another look. These ones are always hard. The up official has the better view, but yeah, That's that ball call. is not on the Arkansas set side of the net. It's a good call, but the Missouri can't take advantage, and they've had a couple of really costly service errors late in this Two set. Two in a row on the first serve when you're trying to come back in this fourth set. It's just it's not the time to get after it. You know, you got to just serve it in. Twenty-three-nineteen. Forbes serving. Killen played it up. That was too easy by Mizzou. They saw that one coming. Yeah, they did. Like you said, just too easy. Nice work from the Marinette. Getting caught in the net. But Arkansas is going to need a nice, strong side out if they want to take this one set. Gillen wants it. She'll get her chance. Yeah, it's like she's just getting a little bit caught. Yeah. Mizzou's doing a nice job blocking. We talked about Dudley in the front row. She's a tall six foot one setter. She's doing a really nice job setting it up and kind of trapping Gillen on the outside. Hogue's in the front row. They know, everybody knows that the ball is going to go to Gillen, and that makes it really tough to execute. Yeah, we started to anticipate it, and I think Mizzou was a step ahead of us, of course. So it was 23-19 a moment ago, and Arkansas spends a timeout because it's down to 23-21. Let's talk about Maggie Cartwright. She has been a force, I think, really leading the charge this afternoon for Arkansas. She is, I bet. Arkansas wishes she was in the front row right now and, uh, because she's been doing such a nice job. You know, with those 14 kills, she's also been extremely efficient, the highest hitting efficiency for Arkansas, hitting 367. And you talked about her three blocks, but also her 15 digs as well is tied for the most digs. So it's not all bad news that she's in the back row. She can be getting it done in the back row as well, but feels like Arkansas is looking for an answer, somebody to put the ball away, and that's Ben Cartwright, but she's in the back row. So uh, a different Arkansas player, I think, is going to need to be able to set up, to step up and uh, get these last couple of kills. First double-double for Maggie, but again in the back row for the time being. And they don't really use her very much in the back row in the same way that they use Head and Gillen in that middle back position. Maybe that'll change. 23-21 here in the fourth. Arkansas leading, Mizzou serving. Lauren Forbes has run off two in a row. Pettis off the slide and gets a much needed Arkansas point. That's where the anticipation was given, but they came back to the right. They did. And you know, I wasn't sure the really nice job from Hogue disguising where she was going to set. You could tell that Gillen, I felt like Gillen really wanted the ball. She delivered a perfect pass, but loved that choice to go to Pettis. Obviously worked out, got the kill. Match point, Lawson serving. Great job by Taylor Head. 
and Hannah Hogue. Sent back off the block, Point Mizzou. Great set from Dudley, setting up Demary in the in the perfect situation. It, she can go after those high hands from Hogue. Hogue was running back from having a great save, so she wasn't set up in a great position, able to get that tool. Right back to Gillen, off the hands. Who says 13 is unlucky? The 13th ranked Razorbacks win their 13th straight. A Baker's dozen. They had to work today, but they take down the zoo. And you know, no better way to end it than a big, strong, powerful kill from Gillen, putting her in the top category for Arkansas. 16 kills, leading her team. Also, 15 digs. So having a nice double double. Take another look. That ball had no chance. She hit it so hard uh, going off of those high hands. And we know that Ilip is a good blocker, so it really speaks to some good swinging from Gillen. Well, that was some work today. The Razorbacks hit 183, and Mizzou hit 175. Arkansas doing a really nice job. Had a, you know, in that second set, uh, a little bit of a downward trend in terms of hitting percentage, but overall hitting close to 200 as a team. Let's take a look at the game summary, the match summary. The Razorbacks again won the first, third, and fourth. And Caitlin, this certainly was uh, competitive at junctures of this match. Yeah, you know, you never quite felt like any team was running away with it, except for Arkansas, of course, in that first set, winning by 10 points. But uh, a lot of back and forth, for sure. We saw a lot of good rallies, like a lot of good long rallies, right? Not a lot of pass set hits, so I know I got my money's worth. Tell you what, the one who stood out today was Maggie Cartwright. She had the double-double, and she joins us. It was a lot of fun to watch you. You were having some fun. What was the difference in this match today? I mean, yeah, our team, we really went out there. We prepped well, and uh, I think we made it a goal to just kind of go out and play some more volleyball. We're getting into October, and you know how October can get. It's always up in the air, so I think we prepped well, and, you know, we always have each other's back, so it was fun. You know, something that really stood out to me was your blocking. So has that been a focus? Because I could really tell the handwork was amazing, really angling those balls in. Uh, yeah, well, Susie Fritz does a great job. Um, our film work was great, and they kind of prepped us well for this match. Uh, we kind of knew their tendencies, and so I just kind of trusted my coaches and went out there, and our middles did a great job, you know, getting to the pins and just, just being stable and knowing where to go and when to go. You've been here a long time for Arkansas. Now you're enjoying the success that this program is enjoying. 13 straight wins. What does that feel like? How confident is, is this team right now? I mean, yeah, we, we go in the gym, we work hard every single day, and I think coming from freshman year to now, you know, five years later, it's, you know, it's, it's rewarding, and I think we're just excited to keep playing. We love the sport, and I think it's awesome that we get in the gym every day, and we're like, we love to do this, and it's, it's a special thing in our gym. All right, last thought. How often do you guys talk amongst yourself and say, we'd like to host, we want to be in position, not just to make the tournament, but to play here at Barnhill? Um, honestly, not a ton, but I know, like, just, it doesn't, we don't talk about it in our gym, but, like, we know, I think we know deep down, you know, that's a goal, and that's, you know, what we're trying to effort towards, so I think it's, it's always up here, it's in our hearts, but I don't know, we're not verbal about it, and I think, you know, just staying kind of level-headed about it. Business-like. Yeah. That's the Razorbacks. <laughs> nice job today. Thank you, guys. That's Appreciate Maggie Cartwright. It. Great job again. A career performance as the Razorbacks now win 13 straight. And, Caitlin, they just keep it going. Keep it going. Lucky number 13 for sure. And uh, have a tough road ahead, but Arkansas been getting it done so far. Old Miss will be here on Friday. Dorian Kraft and uh, Caitlin will have that call for you. Arkansas wins in four sets today. So for Emerson Burris, Caitlin Bogrens, and our entire crew, I'm Greg Dolan thanking you for tuning in. Once again, the Arkansas Razorbacks take down Missouri 3-1, 13 in a row.